All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Robert Smirking on Reviews, and after a while, we are finally back with the Romanoffs. Uh, this is episode five, it's called Bright and High Circle, so full spoilers if you haven't seen the episode. Um, well, I mean, this is a good episode. Um, and I'm starting to understand, you know, the more I watch it, you know, the, the through line through this, you know, and not just the connections between characters and stuff like that. Um, you know, it, the, it, his status, the want of status, the wish of status, the status that you have that you want to keep. Um, and just, you know, belonging, things like that, and not belonging, and wishing you belonged, and seeing how somebody belongs, and wanting that belonging. And, and that's what some of this episode's about. This episode's about a lot of shit. <laughs> because it's all over the place a little bit, which kind of like makes it a little uneven. But because of just if it was about one thing, but it's I feel like there's a lot of like different meanings uh, about certain things going on in the world and not just this little story. Uh, you know, there's different ways to look at this and what they're trying to say or what you know. So let's just get into this. So. I love him. David Rennells, I think that's how you say his last name, uh, from Girls. Love him. Love that guy. Uh, and you got Diane Lane, who I'll, you know, she's great. She's great. She is, uh, despite, you know, I'm, I was, I was going to make a comment about Batman versus Superman just then, but nah. <laughs> Diane Lane is great. Um, Ron Livingston is always great. Um, and I love just the story of they got this piano teacher and everybody they know uses this piano teacher and suddenly there's an accusation. Nobody knows what it is. Nobody knows who said it. And just how these things get started. I mean, as soon as somebody says, you can't tell anybody about this. You know everybody's going to find out about it. And I hate that. I, know, I hate that part about it. It's just, you know where this is headed immediately. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I'm still intrigued of how far these people are going to go. Because I love what, you know, there's a couple of times everybody says in this, you know, we don't want to ruin somebody's life just by saying something that could, you know, be completely untrue. Which, in the climate of today, it is more accurate than... It hasn't been this accurate since, in my opinion, or, you know... People's lives were not getting ruined on a daily basis since McCarthy era, um, when people just accuse people of things. Whether they're guilty or innocent, people's lives have been ruined these days so goddamn fast, just from an accusation. An accusation that, you know, most of the, the time, the, the big cases, in the most cases, has no legal action taken on them. People are just, their lives are just getting ruined. And I liked, uh, there was a comment about somebody's life getting ruined over a joke. You, that people are, yeah, and it's true. And I don't want to get too political, but those are facts. These are the things that are happening. And so they kind of put that into this, like, story of, you know, he's a good teacher, is it true? Should we be concerned? And it's like, yeah, you know, if somebody tells you something like this and you don't know any of the facts behind it, it's hard not to get, especially when it's dealing with minors, kids, your kids, even other people's kids, um, not to kind of control yourself and how these things do just get out of control. And so um, it's all handled really like expertly in this episode of that kind of cycle and then all the different stories that people tell and how that starts to affect your your thinking about things and uh, the way somebody else will tell oh well this is going on this is what happened to me and there's this story maybe this is why this is like and then you find out you know that really what it's more looking like is that the guy's just kind of a liar and so even though that doesn't really help his case you go well okay he's just a liar he may not have been doing any, you know, funny business, but he also is behaving in 
in an opera, you know, in like an unprofessional manner by lying about things to everyone, telling different stories to different people that, you know, event, you know, end up, you know, I guess he doesn't think that they're going to talk to each other eventually know these things about him because it sounds like he's got a different version of himself with every family that he works for. And so it doesn't make you look any better that even if you haven't done anything wrong, as far as like what these accusations could mean, if you're a, you know, a habitual liar, it's going to be much easier for people to think badly of you. Um, and how none of this gets back to him, that it's all internal. And, uh, and then it starts to affect the kids because they have to talk to their kids. And then so she, you know, initially is not supposed to tell anybody, but she can talk to her kids. So she talks to her kids and then that messes up the way they think about him because even though he's never done anything that makes them really feel uncomfortable except for some inappropriate jokes that he told their oldest, um, you can't help but now you put the seeds in their head. Um, and then, you know, once she tells other people and then they talk to their kids and then, you know, it just becomes this snowball effect where everybody is, you know, either defending him in some cases to hating him to not knowing what to do. There's a, they run the whole gamut of like, you know, ways that this can be handled. Um, and so when they find out that it, the, the whole accusation was just about buying alcohol and it's like, yes, that's wrong. You're not supposed to buy alcohol for minors. Ron Livingston puts it pretty well, saying, you know, we all did it. You know, is it right? No, but we got people to do it for us, so we're just as wrong as they are. We shouldn't be asking, they shouldn't be doing. And so he's kind of prepared to just go, well, if, <laughs> that, if that's all it was, and, and he's a good teacher and everything else, you know, what are we going to, you know, we're not going to just fire him. What he did was wrong, but they, you know, it's... I don't know, you know, it's one of those hypocritical things, right? So you fire the guy for something that you used to do in the past and all that stuff. I don't know. That's a, that's a damned if you, I don't know. I've never been in that situation. So, uh, never had to ask anybody for booze and <laughs> nobody ever offered to buy me any. Um, <clears throat> but then, you know, as they start to talk more and more about the, you know, where it comes to the whole. It starts to feel like they're talking about the Me Too movement with the whole accusations ruining people's lives without any basis, you know, just uh, ruining people's lives over things that could be nothing just by saying whatever you want, you know. Uh, it also talks about a little bit with when we do the flashback uh, with Ron Livingston and his dad. And I really like that part about everybody calling this person Alan a girl and how he handles it. And his dad telling him off, like, you know, you, you can't just do that. You can't just make people, you know, you can't ask these things all the time. You know, you can ruin people's lives. Turning out that Alan really was a girl. that you, <laughs> But it doesn't make it any less true how his dad was talking to him about how he wanted to be a better person. You know, you don't just do say, say and do these things without, you know thinking about the consequences of what you're going to say. It's like we can, we have the right to say anything we want, but we need to think about what we say, you know, and think about the consequences of what we say before we just try to fly off the handle. And I, you know, and everybody's guilty of that. I'll say something on here occasionally where I'll, on second retrospective, go, ugh, should I have really said that? I don't know. <laughs> you know, um, even by trying to be really honest about things, you know, sometimes you might go too far to yourself or how other people will take it. Um, it's very true. Um, and, uh, yeah, the whole thing where it turns out that the person he was talking about really was a girl. Yeah. And I said it, that, that doesn't take, you know, change the truth of the matter is, is that he, you know, he was trying to teach him to be a good person and think about the consequences of what you say and do. And in the end, they don't fire him, but there's still that ever nagging kind of thing in the background. You know, he is a liar. You know, he has lied about things. There's dumb things, um, mostly. I mean, the paycheck thing could is a little shady, but he admitted it when he got caught. Um, but 
from here on out, you know, how long will this guy even be their teacher? They don't fire, show him getting fired or anything in this, but you, you kind of do picture, like, how long will this go on? How long will they be able to not let this overwhelm them and just get rid of him? And so, yeah, I mean, that's about it. It's a pretty good episode. It does have those things, like, I love how his dad was talking about, you're listening to the mob and not yourself. That you're just going along with everybody else. You're another person, you know, lighting the torch and, you know, following the mob instead of thinking for yourself. And again, I feel like they're talking more about the way things are uh, in this climate today. Or I could be wrong. It doesn't feel like I'm wrong. <laughs> and that's another hard part about re reviewing these uh, episodes is that I've been getting like, either people really like what I'm saying, or people fucking hate it. <laughs> and I've never, I don't really get that many, like, like really passionate negative responses to, to stuff I've reviewed. I've gotten negative, stupid responses that I just remove. But man, there's some people on here that just really get pissed off about some of the things. And it's like, dude, it's just my fucking opinion. If you, if you don't like it, make your own video. I don't think anybody's really reviewing every episode of the Romanoffs, so, you know, if I'm your only choice and you feel that passionately about it, make your own video. You have a phone, you can make one. You have a phone and a YouTube account. There you go. So anyway, that's it. It was a good episode. I can't wait to watch the next one. I'll probably do episode six today uh, just so I can get, get it done with because um, I know I fell behind. Things have been really hectic in my life and uh, been really working too hard and feeling a little burned out. So this is one of those shows where you kind of really have to be in the mood to watch. So anyway, uh, I will try to get that one done as soon as possible. And I've got to get done with Haunting of Hill House episodes. So <laughs> it's a lot going on. So if you liked this video, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And uh, this is Robin Spurkin Gun Reusing. We will see you on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.